office such as he was but they are not getting paid anywhere near that rate um as far as i know i thought they said I'm, don't quote me on this this could be wrong i thought they said he was getting paid five hundred thousand dollars more than the other co-counsel who was called in to help out on this case and these lawyers have actual experience with criminal cases i don't know if it's because his judgeship <laughs> that gave him that uh criteria to get paid that amount of money but this was her choice to pay him that amount of money and apparently it wasn't approved by her office for him to receive those that monetary sum okay well like i say an affair took place between them um at first there wasn't a denial that they were having an affair however finally went on um the difference is saying that they were only combing through her records because she was a black woman. She uh, decided to use her race as a factor. That may or may have not been true. Uh, most of this case is very racial, very political at the same time. So that may or may have not been true. They were combing through... Um, was I know when coming through any other lawyer in this way that is not black that I recall I don't but I could be wrong okay so that may or may not have been true but then Wade's wife because he's still legally married he ain't divorced yet Wade's wife came out with proof that he had bought her a plane ticket for a trip to Miami with him. A trip that had nothing to do with their job. Um, and she found records of a hotel stay. Now this hotel stay and this trip totaled up to approximately $1,000. Okay. Um, of course, yeah, y'all, I know y'all said that's a cheap ass trip. They wasn't the going nowhere but from Atlanta to Florida. So they, they, they ain't far. You can get Spirit Airlines for 25 bucks. But you can get Southwest for like 170. It ain't gonna cost that much to go from Atlanta to Miami, is what I'm saying. Okay, so um where the problem comes in for Wade is that during his divorce proceedings, he told the judge that he did not have an affair. And now they have proof that there was an affair, and not only was there an affair, there is um, an affair with his boss. So he has pretty much perjured himself in the court of law when he sat up there on that stand in his divorce hearing and said that he wasn't having an affair. So finally then came out and admitted they did have a relationship going on. The relationship started before she even selected him to be on that council, to be co-counsel, which is problematic in itself. Um, then, so now that that has been admitted, the judge who is residing over the case in Georgia, Judge McAfee, he now has to decide whether or not there is indeed conflict. And the conflict will stem from if she some way financially benefited from the affair. So since she paid him $650,000, which was way more than any other counsel that she brought in, and she's going on these trips with him, one trip, totaling around $1,000 whether or not that is considered a financial benefit that jeopardizes her judgment and her position in that office me personally I don't feel that $1,000 is a substantiates a financial benefit at all however I did not find any legal jargon that stipulated what constitutes as a financial benefit. Y'all remember one of the Real Housewives, um, uh, the one in New Jersey, I believe it was, when she got uh, arrested. The reason why she went, because I, think, I believe she financially benefited from the fraud that her husband committed. That's why she had to do some time. But uh, that, is, that was involved in a criminal case. 
problem. If Fannie Willis is disqualified from this case, that means her entire office cannot prosecute this case. Remember, she is the district attorney. She's not an ADA, an assistant. She is the, she's the head of the fucking office. So if she is found to be disqualified, that disqualifies her entire office that disqualifies all the counsel that's brought in to help her. <sighs> two things can happen. I'm not sure which one is accurate because I've heard two different stories from two different lawyers. One said that if they disqualify her and her whole office, the entire case gets thrown out. Which means all the 19 get to walk free. I believe that overturns the guilty pleas of the four who already pleaded guilty. If, um, but the other person, the other lawyer that I listened to said that the case can be picked up or has to be reassigned to another office or a special counsel. Which the problem then comes in is if that special counsel even agrees that this case is worthy to be taken to court. And they may decide to not bring suit at all. So we again risk, risk losing that case altogether. That was one of the strongest cases that they had against citizen trump and his co-conspirators i am so so angry about this because i was counting on that case we got the democrats had a, a vote in new york but the, the, the democrats won the vote in new york for joe the seat that was held by george santos um Susie, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, he used to hold that seat before and, and has decided to run again and effectively won, giving the Democrats a three majority, a three majority lead in the Senate, which is great <laughs> as far as pushing measures on the floor. It's great also for Chief Mayorkas, the Chief of Homeland Security. So the Republicans decided to impeach him, right? Because they didn't like the position that he took or didn't take on the border. Mind you, there was a bipartisan agreement that was reached in regards to the border that the Republicans, once it got to the House, voted down. They don't want to have any resolution to the, uh, the border. They want to keep it in a chaotic state because Trump told them to. They're taking advice. They're taking orders from somebody who's not even in fucking office right now. He says, let them motherfuckers burn. They say, we're going to set it on fire and throw in the oil. That's how they do. Okay? They don't even listen to their fucking constituents. But they listen to this man who ain't even in office right now. That's looking at 91 felony charges. They're taking orders from him. So anyway, they failed to impeach Mayorkas the first time. So they put it to the floor again. They put it to the floor again and won the impeachment by one vote. That tells me that they threatened the lives, this is alleged, of all the ones who changed their votes. That's what that tells me. But we've seen them on camera threatening the lives of people before to change their votes. We've had other people in the house come out and say that their lives was threatened to change their votes. Okay. So I believe that was would, would possibly happen this time as well. So now that he, Mayorkas, is impeached, that does not mean that he loses his job. It has to go through the Senate now. The Democratic-led Senate, who now just has a three-person majority now, it has to go back to them and they vote whether or not that they will prosecute and remove him from office. I do not believe that they will. Okay, remember last week, um, a couple weeks ago, a couple 
mentioned, he paid off Stormy Daniels to keep quiet about some illegal business activities, more business fraud than he did during that 2016 election, right? Um, the case is actually set to go to trial right now, March 25th. Now, this date was up in air because of uh, the federal case pending against him that was supposed to begin on March 4th. Um, but Judge Chuckie had already spoke to him, and he didn't think it was going to be a problem to you know, have her case go at first. But he never took it off his books. So that case is now moving forward, honey. Now, Trump said that he was going to be in court with Sonny Willis today. So he could look at her face when she get taken down. I think that was his words. But he wanted to look at her face when the, they throw the book at her in regards to having that case thrown out. Because he thinks that case is going to get thrown out. But now, he has to take his ass to New York instead. Because in this criminal case in New York, he has to appear. There will be no uh, cameras in that courtroom. Um, it would be almost the same as the fraud case where they were inside the courtroom and he come out and he talk to the press. That type of situation going on. So what's going to happen today, uh, this is Thursday, yeah, today, is they are going to decide, first of all, whether or not they're going to throw the case out, which is what Trump asked for. He asked for all his cases to be thrown out, which I guess anybody would. Um, but guess what that's going to be decided today? Whether that case is going to get thrown out. Um... He has 34 felony charges in this particular case here. I don't believe it's going to get thrown out because, again, that's another case. But they have a lot of evidence stacked up against him. And now, his civil case in New York, um, where they have already proved that he has falsified business documents and records, kind of gives them a little more weight. Because some of these business deals and transactions may be similar to the ones that are are being falsified in the hush money case. Keep my eye on that. Okay, so I'm going to move off of that right now. Um, I, I put up Real Housewives of Atlanta. If y'all still watch that show, that franchise is now going into its 16th season. Um, Candy Burris, who joined the show in the second season, decided she is quitting. She is done with it. I, I don't know how her marriage has taken a toll because I stopped watching the show season nine, but she's done with it. I know that she has made a lot more, had opened up new business ideas and opportunities that we were able to see because of that show, even though Candy was already shaking the move without the show. we were, But we were able to see them as viewers. Um, but she's, she's done with it. She's over it. She's out. Okay? So what that means is they're bringing back Portia. Now, Portia joined the show in season five. Um, she left the show in 2021 with season 13, 11. Three years ago. Season 13 is when she left the show. And now she's coming back. I don't know how y'all feel about that. I know uh, Sheree. None of the cast members outside of Portia has uh, had any type of confirmation or any contract yet that we are aware of that they are the kind that they have been renewed. Sheree is the only name I know besides Kenya. I don't know who the Drew girl is. Drew Sedora, I believe her name is, and it's another chick. I don't know who those people are. Um, where they came from, whatever. It's not important to me because I don't watch the show, but I figure y'all want to know. The Handmaid's Tale. Like, I finally got the word of the Handmaid's Tale child. It ain't coming out to 2025 now. Did I say that already? I don't think I did. I thought I said it was coming out in 2024. We last watched the show in December of 2022. The writer's strike slowed it down. The writer's strike of 2023 paused everything as far as the show's release in 2023. They were supposed to pick up the show and start filming and all that stuff. February of this year, so it can come out in 2024. But I, I just found out they not even start anything into summer, into June of 2024, which means the show will not be released until 2025. The summer of 2025 is what they're looking at. What that means is that's going to push back the testament even longer because of there's a lot of things happening in the last and final season of the original Handmaid's Tale that's going to explain what's going on in the opening episodes of the testament now the testament is already underway they've been writing it for a while now um they greenly greenly production
production already now. They, I don't think they started production. They greenlit it already. So this delay is this, this, this that'll be a three year break, child. Damn near two and a half, three years break between the last time we watched The Handmaid's Tale and the time it's coming back. People are, are gonna forget about it, but I, I I'm still interested in watching. I want to see how they're gonna take this current political climate and weave it into the storyline because they were very good at doing that. And I want to know what the fuck happened to Serena in, in fucking June after they got on that damn train. I really do. Okay, I'm gonna need to know because I know the story of. Uh, the testament and the setting in which that story takes place doesn't line up with them leaving Canada on that train. So that's why I need, I need to know. I need to know. Okay. So what else I got going on here? I'm almost at work child. Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Um the halftime show was performed by Usher. It was the highest watched halftime show on one network ever. He got 129 million views from one network. And there were several networks that were airing it. I watched it on Paramount. Uh, my daughter watched it on Nickelodeon. They, it was so cute on Nickelodeon. They had the little Nickelodeon characters, you know, watching and, and, and um, Reporting on the show, the door to explore, SpongeBob was going in. It was so cute. <laughs> so, yeah, Nickelodeon did that thing. So, but just for one. Now, what I was concerned about was when Usher took the shirt off, and I was like, "Ain't he gonna get an FCC fine? If he not, ain't Janet Jackson gonna get an apology?" That's where my mind went when he took his clothes off. I wasn't like, "Oh my God, he took his clothes off." I told y'all before, I don't find Usher sexually attractive to me. I love the way he sings, but I don't find him sexually attractive. Um, Alicia Keys, baby, when she first started off, some of y'all missed it because y'all had that seven second delay. Alicia Keys started off horrible as hell. I was like, This is your note. I was trying to give the note to her, she couldn't find it. But the girl looked motherfucking good, baby. She looked good in that red. I was like, Look at Alicia, old thicky, thicky, selfie, selfie. Go ahead, on girl. And, and it turned out to be a damn good show. He brought out Will I Am, he brought out um, Luda. He brought out Lil John. It was a damn good show. It was too short for me. Um, he had mic issues in the beginning himself. I was like, what the fuck going on with his mic? It kept going in and out. So, you know, but oh, he brought out her. So yeah, he had uh, the, the Jackson State University marching banner. He was gyrating and rolling. But I said, when he took his shirt off, though, my first thought was Janet Jackson. <laughs> first thought was Janet Jackson. For those of y'all who didn't know, Usher got married that night as well. His long-term girlfriend of three years. Um, very handsome woman. It's <laughs> a nice way to put it. She's a handsome face woman. Uh, yeah. They um, they got married after the after the Super Bowl in Vegas. Um, I don't know why I thought Usher was already married. I thought he was. I, I thought he was already married. I don't remember when he got divorced or separated from the last woman. I thought he was already married. But anywho. And of course, everybody went on this little rampage about Cat Williams being right, right because he married another uh, woman that ain't that don't look black. Or that ain't black. Or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, a, lot of, a lot of entertainers are speaking about that lately. I know they um T Pain said something about it because he with his girl who don't look black and he was like, We've been together two, 21 years and y'all still tripping off. Uh what some little man said in the interview two months ago, whatever, whatever, whatever. Anywho, the last big piece of news, child Beyonce is coming out with a country album. Hold on. I'm super hella late for Let me start that too. She coming out with a country album, y'all, baby. Um, and pissed the world off. Now me personally, I thought it was kind of fucked up that she announced it when she announced it. It didn't give Usher his moment to shine, you know, um, because of her announcement. However, it didn't hurt Usher. I 
don't think. Um, but it also pissed people off because country folks can't stand Beyonce <laughs> for the most part. Remember when she did the CMAs? Boy, they dog her the fuck out doing the CMAs. However, I did love her CMA performance. Daddy's Lesson is my favorite song on her damn Lemonade album. Matter of fact, it was the only song that I liked on the album for a long time before the rest of it grew on me. I like the Dixie Chicks, who are now called the Chicks. They removed the Dixie due to, you know, trying to be an ally. Um, I love that performance. I love that performance. There are a lot of black people in country. But, I don't know. Are they, are they afraid? Beyonce finna come and just straight shit on them? <laughs> uh, the song that they play, I didn't like it, though. I'm going to tell you that. I didn't like it. But, Shit. I'm here for her having a country album on shit for real. She ain't the first to do it. And she won't be the last. Yo, yeah, okay, Michelle got a whole country album. She just performed at the CMAs as well. They didn't like that either. Um, but yeah. I'm here for it. Go ahead, Beyonce, do your motherfucking thing. She can do it. Like I said, I love Daddy's lessons. That was my shit. And she already she got she she talk with that country twain because she from from the south. Shit, she from Texas. Her daddy from Louisiana. <laughs> she can do it. How black people start the country music anyway? It was country music was birth for the blues. You know what I mean? So shout out to Beyonce for her new damn album. Um, I'm gonna hear it all one day. Um, it was something else I was gonna talk about. I don't know what it is, but I'm at work. And I'm a half hour late, so.